Well, I think the key question and challenge was how do you make sure that a society which is deeply patriarchal, uh, which has come out of a racist and capitalist past, in which the majority of those who were the poorest were black women in the former homelands, townships and informal settlements, how do you change that? I'd uh, been tasked with editing South Africa's country report to Beijing. And when I got the report, the draft that had been done by, in 1994 already, by the previous apartheid bureaucrats, they'd omitted to include women in the homelands. Um, so, you know, they immediately, a, a large chunk of South Africa's women were invisible and silent in the official record. You're not just talking about, uh, you know, patriarchy being an apartheid phenomena. It was a phenomena that goes way back even beyond colonialism to pre-biblical times. So it's, it's a very deeply rooted phenomena. So the challenge of how do you begin to shift that, uh, what are the mechanisms that's required to shift that was the challenge. They'd already been thinking about well, how, what should you need? And an examination of uh, newly liberated states and how do you shift, how do you make change? And it was in that context that the idea of mechanisms, requiring specific mechanisms, institutions that would help that change uh, were looked at. These institutions are there to ensure political will. They themselves, to be effective, have to have strong leadership, have to have enough sufficient resources, and the necessary authority to influence policy um, and influence their counterparts. And unfortunately, all the mechanisms that have been set up since 1994 um, did not meet that criteria. Um, they had very little resources. Um, they uh, often had very little authority to influence anyone else. And um, yeah, um, and, and often the leadership was not recognized um, by civil society. <coughs> so the leadership of, of, um, of the institutions weren't necessarily uh, leaders, leadership that had uh, credibility amongst women in civil society. So there's been a lot of criticism of the so-called national machinery. Often when I engage directly with uh, women that I see as feminist um, or as gender activists you know, in government or in different contexts, they will take a particular, they'll understand the situation, they'll understand what the issues are, but um, then have to tell whatever the line is or are convinced that this is not the correct position. You know, the, the question of how do you actually, how do women and the structures that are supposed to represent women, whether these are women's desks, whether it's the Office and Status of Women, the CG, the Women's Committee in Parliament, at local, provincial and national level, how do you ensure coordination, collaboration, solidarity in the face of, um, of, of po political loyalty. So are you loyal to uh, the Constitution as a member of Parliament, or are you loyal to uh, your political party? Yes, there are problems with all of these structures, but I think if we look at uh, them as individual structures and say they have failed or they have succeeded, they are hopeless or whatever. I think that's actually playing into the patriarchy. I think we have to actually say who's got power here in our country. I would challenge why it is that these structures have no resources or very limited resources. Why it, who it is that gets to select who gets into these positions and what their loyalties are expected to be.
And if they challenge those loyalties, what kind of support is there from the women's movement for those who challenge those loyalties? You have to look at what is destroying women's power. And what are the, and, and the patriarchal system, a misogynistic, in which misogynistic acts of rape take place, or you know, a whole range of, of violence, including femicide, uh, the killing of women who are lesbian, etc. Is that actually that whole the whole continuum of violence? Um, is affected because of a, a, a global patriarchal system. And part of that system is about the economic and political decisions that destroy women's power. We have the power to actually make a significant shift as the women's movement, not just in our country and our continent, but across the world. And, and that's the opportunity, I think, and the possibilities um, for tackling patriarchy as, as a global system. It takes particular forms in different parts of the world, but it's, it's make no mistake, it's, it's actually a global system. So I think that's, that's what we have to, and we can, I think.